Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> that's what he found with us. Plant something that's over it. That's good. But don't go eat that. That's bad. Is that right? I ain't playing with the Bible. I'm showing you what it says. Like it or not. I'm your brother. You've been listening to them, them, them other people tell you this for years wrong. <laughs> Let me try to put it out for you. And I'm, I'm reading you in English, but I can do this in Hebrew also. All right? Don't let anybody fool you. I ain't coming from this King James. Because King James wasn't even a Baptist. <laughs> no, I'm not sure. He's an Anglican. Here you are, a Baptist in my King James Bible. Now, go read up on the Anglican church and see what they did to Baptists. Yeah? What is that? Ten? I thought I was further than that. Thank you. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be light <laughs> in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. He did that. Didn't he just do that? He, somebody forgot. But let's go on. Let's go on with our soul here, you know. And it is. <laughs> Where now? 14. And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Didn't God just grow something back here? Don't things grow seasonally? Is this another mistake? How do you have a season created after you had a season? So God is doing things, looking at them, and naming them the same way I would. I'd make a car, look at it and say, automobile. Mobile. Automobile. <laughs> If I get in the car and I turn the key and it starts up and I drive away, I say, this car is good. <laughs> if it don't move, this car is. The point I'm reaching at, and I can go on, is who is making these statements? Who's doing it? Who's saying this story? Who's talking about God? Who's watching God? Who's under the water looking up monitoring God? No, not the devil. Let me show you. Because in Genesis chapter 3, the same person talks about the devil. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 says, Now the, ser the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. So that ain't the devil. Here's someone talking about the devil now. Over here, there's an identity. It says, check this, and this is also in Genesis uh, chapter 3. should be around 15. No, I'm wrong. Yes. Yeah, and I, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. This is what this person heard God say. You know what I mean? It ain't him doing it. He separates the devil from God, from the woman, from Adam. He goes on and says, um, now listen, check, this is verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us. Now this person is quoting God. The Bible, this person identified himself not as God earlier. But now in 22 it says, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good from, to know good from evil. In Genesis chapter 1, he talks about God. In Genesis chapter 2, he talks about Adam and Eve. In Genesis chapter 3, he talks about the devil. And in the part where he talks about the devil, he now says, now. Now. Now he mentioned the devil in Genesis chapter 3. Now the man knows good and What did the man know first then? What did he know first? He knew good. The man knew good. Right? Because he learned evil. Are you with me? I mean, this is just, and all we remember is the third person here. Almost the fifth person, in fact. And he goes on to say, now listen to this. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden, talking about God, right? Of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. 
So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubim. From the word in Hebrew, karub, to mean next to something, close to him. Cherubim. And with flaming sword. Wait a minute. Man is in a garden. The God planted himself. Some being is talking about this garden and about man being in this garden. And talking about a devil that's also in this garden. And then talks about angels that God put in front of this garden to keep people out of the garden. Again, the question should come up. Who is this person or this thing that lives under the water that monitored God and monitored God's word and heard the discussion between, guess who? The woman and the devil. So he said here, and the woman, this is Genesis chapter 3 verse 2, and the woman said unto the serpent, now he's standing there looking like this. No church never told me about somebody standing there. I was told there was a tree, a serpent, and a woman. Nobody told me somebody was standing there going this. But the Bible tells you that. The Bible tells you somebody standing there, isn't it? It says, and, <laughs> and the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of every fruit of the tree of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree of the garden, which is in the midst of the garden, God said, this is the person heard, God said, Who is this person? Take that back to church. And the Muslims have it in the Quran, the same story. Take that back to your Imam and ask him, Who's watching the story? It's like the Jesus story. Remember the Jesus story and Judas? What happened to Judas? Some of anyone good Christian or ex good Christian. What happened to Judas? He hung himself. Somebody, well, let's just do one story at a time. What, how did the story go? Why? He felt bad. And he went back to the room. Threw the money down. Go ahead. No, I have to add it because I don't want everybody to hear that you hear Oh, I'm sorry. Um, suppose he killed himself because he felt guilty because he portrayed Jesus like Yahshua. That's right. And he went and threw the money down and went out and got a rope and he went to a tree and what? Was he alone or was somebody with him? So he wrote that. Who watched it? <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? If this is true, who was keeping the record? Somebody was walking going, sit on the corner. <laughs> got the rope. <laughs> Somebody got the rope. Right there. He's looking for the tree. He found the tree. He tied a rope on the tree. He hung himself. And then they stuck it in your Bible. Ask yourself, go back to read the story and ask yourself, who wrote that? Who wrote the Job story? Where God was there, the devil was there, the angels were there, and Job. And, jo and Job was being abused. Now, God was there, the devil was there. The angels were there, all the heavenly hosts, and Job and his family. Who wrote the story? <laughs> Who was watching Job suffer? Are you hearing me? Who was the person who saw Muhammad go into battle and lose? For the Quran. For the Muslim in here. The Quran speaks directly about Allah, and then it speaks about Muhammad. And then it speaks about Gabriel. Anyone who does not love Gabriel or Michael is an enemy of the law. Yes, sir. I thought you said Gabriel brought the Quran to Muhammad. Let's try again. If Gabriel brought the angel Gabriel, brought the Quran to Muhammad, how can Gabriel say anybody who's an enemy of the law, or anybody who's an enemy of Gabriel and Michael is an enemy of the law? How can you say that? He would say, anybody who's enemy of me and Michael. So now, who wrote that book? It didn't come from Allah, but the law is in the book. It didn't come from Gabriel, he's in the book. It didn't come from Michael, he's in the book. It couldn't come from Muhammad, because he's in the book. But you don't bother to investigate these types of things. The reason the trick that are messing our minds up. These are the things that are making us racist. These are the things that are making people blow up World Trade buildings and assassinate people. These are the type of doctors that tell people, I don't like what that imam is saying, we got to go kill him. But the thing is, stop him from talking before he wakes me up. Because we were the fastest growing religion in the world, Islam. 
and now we're not that fast. We had planned to take the whole world, and now we're not going to be able to do that because some fanatic called Imam Isa became Malachi, and he's kicking us in the butt with facts. And Christians are mad too because I can dance through this book and just about go to any point and read it and just go, when are you going to see this? It don't make no sense. And then the ultimate is, please tell me, why is it necessary? Meaning this, why is the Bible or the Quran necessary at all? Someone tell me. Wait a minute. In the Bible it says all scriptures will be proof for the edification of the body. Beautiful. Why is it necessary was the question. That's a beautiful statement. Give me the mic. Why is the Bible necessary at all? I'm it, is, to say. it is necessary for the edification of your spirit, soul, and body. Okay. Is there a connection between man, God, and his spirit? Let me go to say before you answer. St. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. It was not anything made, it was made without him. In him was the light, and the light was the light of man. The light shined in darkness, darkness shone in the dark. If a man said from God, he's in the dark. I mean, you know, I wrote the Bible. <laughs> I was the one watching. <laughs> now, now, listen. <laughs> That's a joke. According to this their book, there's a connection between man and God. The spirit of man and God, there's a connection because God said, I created man and I blew into man of mine and man became a living. So man is already spiritually in contact with God at all times. So why does he have to make an external communication when there's already a internal communication. Why is this book or the Quran, why is it necessary at all if every living creature already has a spiritual connection to God, a direct telephone line, not a beeper, <laughs> that God's personal telephone number and we communicate with God directly at all times. Why is the Bible necessary? Tell me. Somebody try. Oh yeah, too bad, huh? No, I understand that side of it. I'm speaking to the Christian, the Muslim, or the Jew who believes in the Bible. If you don't believe in it, then please don't answer. Because you're going to say the same thing I say. I'm asking my brothers and sisters that are enslaved into this crap to give me some logical answer why they are believing this thing. Why is it needed? Listen, why doesn't God do this? And all evil is gone. Don't tell me in due time, because God lives beyond time. Time is based around sun, moons, and stars. Why is there evil? Why is there age? Why? Can you talk to me about that? Why is there suffering? Why is there cast? Why is there blindness? Why are there cavities? If you are that may sound funny. I ain't doing it though. When I put the cap on, you see what I'm saying. Why are there cavities if you are in the image and the likeness of God unless he has cavities? Why are there blood diseases and unless you can tell me that God can have a blood disease? If not, this book lies. Because it said, I created man in my image and after my likeness. Image. He means he looks like me physically. Likeness, he acts like me. Have you ever had a headache? I don't mean your wife. Have you ever had a headache? Or your husband? Have you ever had a headache? Yes yeah. or no? Does God do headaches? Yeah. According to his Bible? Yes. Does, does God do diarrhea? Yeah. According to his book? Yeah. Yes. Now, why do we need him? Why do we need God if God is not doing anything for us? And I'll tell you, you may not feel it, but if you had a relative in a plane and it crashed and 200 people 
died and one lived and it wasn't your relative, you'd be asking why, why God? Why my wife died and did that person live? Why are incidents like that happen? Why are we in this state of mind? Why are we even at this point in time where we're questioning? You know why? Because it's time to question. And if it doesn't stand up to the questioning, then it's got to go. And it doesn't stand up to the questioning. You know what I mean? This got to go. Unless you can get up there, and anybody who wants to, who's capable, can get up there and let us ask you some questions. I'll sit down there. And I want you to open this Bible, and I want you to show me, first of all, why does God need a New Testament? Why does he have to use something new? That's like me. I got to get a new car. Because my old car don't work. So why do you need a new testament? Should it be a continuing testament? You know what I mean? That tells you it's man. New concept, new ideas. Christianity is nowhere near what Jesus practiced. Jesus was an Israelite of the tribe of Judah. A Nazarite. Very strict. You know what I mean? He didn't know nothing about your holy roll of Baptist, seven day Adventist spirit chasing tambourines, slapping fried chicken, pork chop, eating chicken, and sucking bull crap. <laughs> he didn't know nothing about that crap. He didn't know you did the stuff you made up because you got a new testament. You started new testifying. And based it on baptism, right? And said baptism removes all sin. Is that what they said? And tell me why Jesus got baptized. He never had a sin. It's lies. This is all lies. Yeah, you got one? <laughs> okay, the Old Testament. Yeah, the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the circumcision of the flesh. Okay. The New Testament is the circumcision of the heart. Okay. Did, did, did Jesus get according to the New Testament? Did Jesus get circumcised on the eighth day of his penis? Yes. Was that in the New Testament or the Old Testament? New, New Testament. You want to start your, you want to start the story again? Because you said the flesh was for the Old Testament and the New Testament is for the heart. But Jesus got circumcised. I'm talking about the I'm not talking about the difference. No, 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 no. No, let me I'm not talking about the, the, the first part of the Bible and the second part of the Bible. I'm talking about the covenant. Okay. The Abrahamic covenant versus the Blood covenant. Okay. Blood versus blood and the blood covenant. But the, the, Both of them together. The word covenant in the Bible is brit mila. Brit mila. And it comes from the word to cut something. Zahaba. Where they cut the foreskin with a straight knife with six inches. You follow? This custom was not an Abrahamic custom because Abraham had no customs of his own. Abraham was a Chaldean. He lived in Ur of Chaldea and lived under Babylonian customs, as all as did all the other Israelites when they were taken into bondage by Nebuchadnezzar. They learned circumcision from the Babylonians, who got it from the Sumerians. You follow what I mean? So there is no covenant of circumcision, flesh or heart, that was not taken from the Babylonian traditions and the God that knew them is the sixth God in the Jewish calendar, and that is the sixth month of the Jewish calendar, Tammuz. And that's in the Bible. And they tell you in the Bible, in the book of Ezekiel, that the women of Israel sat in the house of Jehovah and cried for the God, Tammuz. And they, the Christians cannot explain why they were crying to a Babylonian God. It tells you in the Bible that all the children of Israel turned away and worshipped the, the God Baal, Baal Hadad. A Babylonian God and they can't tell you why they did it. They can't explain these things. Yes, brother. Well, but um can you tell us what he was speaking on the water. Say that again? Can you tell us he was speaking on the water. Well he, he was on the water what he was speaking. Oh who was speaking under the water? Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. this was a, this as everybody who stepped on my lips when I was talking a little while ago and had to quiet him up. That was the reptilians who resided on this planet long before the big 
bang. You know why they call it a big bang? It's because something crashed into the planet and split it in half. This is logged in the Sumerian tablets called the Atrahasis and the Inumai Elish. They recorded these things before the Bible was even recorded. And they have the whole seven days broken down in the, in the Kuni farm, Kuni farm, which is a script, word script, about an event that took place. Well, beings are living on this planet beneath the water, who you mix in with, and this is why when you're born, you're, con you're in a sack of water before you come on to dry land. And that's why you, can, you have gills before you develop your lungs. And that's why when you open your hands like this, you have webs here. And that's why the men can flex here, and women too, but they're smaller, and we have wings. And that's why our face is set up so we are aerodynamic when we're laying this way, not moving this way. Our lines and our face with the eyebrows and the hair, we move through water, and we swim, and we have fins, and we have wings. You know that? We have scales today. If you don't put no Nazim or some baby oil on your head. <laughs> you know what we call it ashiness, but you can scrape that ash off as a form of scales. You know what I'm saying? These are beings that mixed in with you a long time ago. You were a reptilian. That's why you have these webs. You know, and these beings dwell here on, on beneath the surface of this uh, planet before there was any dry land here, millions of years before. And I'm going to tell you, one of, the, one of the biggest mistakes I would say about this Bible is the word gold. It's a big mistake they made when they say in Genesis, and the gold of that land was good. And the planet was just created. Yeah, Genesis, yeah. Genesis chapter, uh, Genesis chapter 2. Verse 4. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day which the Lord God made, had made the earth and the heavens. This book declares the generations when the earth was made. You go down, it says, in, in Ethiopia, where the gold, it says, in verse 12, and the gold of that land is good. It takes gold millions and millions of years to process itself beneath the ground. Now, how could God have just created the planet and then they find gold somewhere. The planet would have to have been in existence for millions of years. Millions of years for them to, for gold to form itself. There's a mistake here. No. Where the people from Nod come from? Who was Cain afraid of when he told God, the punishment is too great for me to bear. Anyone who catches me is going to kill me. And God knew people lived out there, but God said, don't worry about it. Because anybody that does anything else, I'm going to put a sevenfold curse on them. Is that right? Okay? So now, if that's true, then God knew that there were other people out there that could kill Cain. Is that right? And Cain went to the land of Nod and got a wife. Is that right? Now, the Bible says the only people on the planet is Adam, Eve, and Cain, and Abel, and Cain killed Abel. Where did the wife come from? Who are these people that came to afraid of is going to kill them? There are people on the planet way before Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve is a breed. The word Adama comes from the word blood and earth. That is a clot, a genetic experiment, something that now your scientists have, are starting to admit since they have retrieved certain crafts out of Gulf Breeze, New Mexico, now they're cloning. Something that's been mentioned thousands of years ago in the Enumai Elish, the cloning of human beings by beings who came to this planet from the Sirius Star constellation. And the Egyptians logged it, and the Sumerians logged it, and the Navajo logged it, and the Shoshone logged it, and all these people logged it. But you got a Judaic doctrine watered down into a New Testament, and they cut you off from that information. The only part they gave you was that a ship is going to come get you one day. And that's in Revelation 21. That's the only part. They didn't tell you nothing else. They mentioned in here, in Genesis chapter 6, I ain't going to go through it, about God coming to earth and having sex with men, I, with the daughter of the men. I explained that to y'all. Giants were here. And if Adam and Eve wasn't giants, 
and Adam and Eve is in the image and after the likeness of God, then who are these giants in the image and after the likeness of in Genesis chapter 6? Who are they images? You follow? And they were able to have sex with Adam and Eve's seed. In order for them to have sex with them and conceive, what does that mean? They had to have the same genetic structure. So now who were they? They were giants. They came to earth, called the sons of God, and took the daughters of man and gave birth to children. They took Adam and Eve's kids. Who were they? They called them Nephilians. The word Nephilim means to come down to earth. You hear me? Why ain't these things being made clear to you? So you be prepared for the things that's happening now when the stars are lining up and no teacher or no astronomer and nobody taught you in school about no alignment. They didn't even mention it to you on the news until a week before it happened. And they said, well, the planets are lining up now. Hell box. How come they can trace out hell this color? They've been doing it since the Roman days. But hell box, they didn't know. Hell box pops up, and not only did hell box pop up, but something popped up behind it four times the size of Earth. We all read the article, didn't we? And it, thought, and it sent thinking intelligent ways. They said, it's sending messages to us. They said it's coming to get somebody. Remember that? That was on the news. How they managed to let you hush that up? By letting some crazy animals go up and kill themselves and make you feel guilty if you bring it up. Oh, you belong to the Heaven's Gate cult, huh? Psychological warfare. So it means you can't bring it up without feeling guilty. If I bring it up, they say, how about, oh, you one of those. You want to commit suicide. Big calm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, brother. I was talking to someone recently. Um, well, first of all, thanks for everything. But I was talking to someone recently about the information, and they got upset or angry or whatever, and they said that I have the spirit of Quebec or sex in me. And I was like, are you calling me the devil, or are you trying to make me think I'm thinking they're angry, so they're trying to sit, you know, you the devil. Yeah. You know, so are you calling me like the devil? He no, Sebek. You have Sebek, and Sebek controls set. And I was wondering, what was he? Do you know what he was really trying no, to say? Well, he's making reference to Egyptology, and he's also adding in his own story because Sebek doesn't have anything to do with the control of Set, who was the brother of Osiris. Right? None whatsoever. And Set was a good being. He was a being of darkness, and Osiris was a being of light. Because Ra sent Osiris and Set. Set is where you get the word sunset from. The psychological game is to make me and you think darkness is bad and lightness is good. And I was saying, if God was there in the beginning and said, let there be light, and God cut on the switch of light, then when God cut on the switch of light, he was in darkness, and in order, in order to have the ability to cut on the switch of light, he must have some intelligence. So the original intelligence must have dwelled in darkness before the light was cut on. You know what I mean? But they got you thinking that light is evil, I mean, I'm sorry, that darkness is evil, and that light is right and light. It's all part of the game. So the brotherhood of sex, I belong to it. That's the black brotherhood. The, night, the brothers of the night, meaning the intellect that existed before the light of chaos was cut on. You know what I'm saying? And then tell her or him that in order for you to call me the devil, I've got to believe in the devil. And I give you support by believing in a devil because by that I justify your silly belief in God. Because God could not exist without the devil. Because you wouldn't know there's a God if there was a devil. How would you know there's good if there's not evil? So people who teach you about God are really teaching you the doctrine of the devil. That's how the devil keeps his doctrine going, by making people praise God. And every time I say God, the opposite comes to your mind, the devil. Every time I say good, you think, that's the game. See, we don't accept that crap. We don't accept the God, devil. And let me tell you something about the devil who you say you believe in, and anybody who says they're satanic worshiper, I've said this many times before, tell them I said book. You know why? Because you cannot be a satanic worshiper because Satan would betray you. 
Satan is supposed to be totally rebellious, totally disagreeable, uncooperative. But why do you cooperate with a bunch of people dressed with black fingernails on? Why do you allow the witches to have a little group? He would have to, in order to maintain his position as a devil, he would have to betray them. Otherwise, if he got nice to them, if he visited one of their meetings, and they had little five-pointed stars and candles and circles and all, how many blah blah blah, and he walked in and said, Oh, my children. <laughs> Being nice to them was thought for the position as a devil. You understand? Now, the best interpretation of the devil I ever seen was in Independence Day, when all those people got up on the roof with those signs to them at the test, and they were going, Oh, we love you. Oh, come. Oh, and they say, Zap them. Now, that would be the devil. You cannot make a pact with the devil. You cannot sell your soul with the devil. You do not sit in any group and chant, and the devil comes and gives you all good fortune for serving him. Bull crap. The devil would betray you the moment he saw you, otherwise he wouldn't be the... In order to maintain his position, he got to do his job. And the same thing applies to God. God can't come down as a man because he'd be less than God by your concept of God. And if he becomes less than God, what? If so, can God do everything? No. God can't become less than God and still be... Hello? Not heavy. Simple stuff. Don't buy it. So if you call me the devil, that means I believe in God. I don't believe in your God, and I don't believe in your devil. So it's another name. But we're set, set, okay, set it, that's me. Take the name, say, next time I say it, say my name is set it. Oh. Why ain't you saying it? You think I'm a devil, why you ain't jumping? <laughs> Bob makes you think you're capable of walking up and talking to the devil. If I'm the devil, why you ain't afraid to talk to me? But you, uh, you know. <laughs> 